Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to Predatory Exotics. This is another episode of our new series that we are doing every Monday. You saw Ollie's episode last week where he covered the Nano Wide and the Nano Tool Terrarium. Today's video is going to be about the Exoterra Mini Wide Terrarium from Exoterra. So this is a 30 centimeter cube or an eight inch cube depending on how you measure it. So we're going to talk about some of the different reptiles, amphibians and invertebrates that you can keep in a tank this size. Obviously this isn't going to be an extensive list of everything that you can keep inside this terrarium, but it will give you a few ideas if you happen to have an empty tank this size. So let's start the video off with what we keep inside our Exoterra mini wide terrarium. We keep the Stenodactylus Stenodactylus or the dwarf sand geckos. These are some of our babies from our adult colony. These go great inside this enclosure. You can keep a pair of adult Stenodactylus Stenodactylus or one, maybe two of the Stenodactylus petrii. If you do find any of the other Stenodactylus species, they would go great in this enclosure. This tank is also a great host for a load of different desert micro species, such as viper geckos. These are a small micro gecko species from Pakistan. Uh, they're one of my personal favorites that I'll be trying to get soon. You could keep one to two in an enclosure this side or a whole bunch of babies. And another species that we're hopefully going to look into getting is the binos gecko. These are a small parthenogenic gecko species from Australia. They'd go great inside this tank as you only need one to produce eggs as they don't need to have a breeding pair. If you want to keep something a little bit more tropical inside your tank, morning geckos are another great small parthenogenic gecko species. Uh, you need two of these even though they're all female just because this stimulates breeding. Um, but you could get a couple of these in enclosure this small and you'd get a little breeding colony eventually that you might need to upgrade. Some of the other tropical micro gecko species that are really cool, the Madagascar clawless gecko is a really unique species that would go great inside this tank. The Eloc gecko is another one of my personal favourites that hopefully we'll be getting soon. And any of the smaller Paraedura species, so not the Madagascar ground gecko as it is a little bit too big, but any of the Paraedura bastardi, Vizimba or the Androiensis would go great inside this tank. So we've covered some of the micro geckos that you can keep inside this tank. Any of the larger geckos or larger lizards would be too big for this size tank and we'll move on to that in some of the later episodes. Next, let's talk about snakes that you can get inside this enclosure. Obviously, snakes tend to get a lot larger and they will need a larger enclosure. Even some of the smaller snakes, such as the rough green snakes and the smooth green snakes, are very active, so you need a larger enclosure. You wouldn't be able to keep them in a tank this size. But a couple of the ones that we can suggest, uh, if you have baby snakes or neonates, uh, baby samboas would go great inside this enclosure. Also, if you have baby hognoses, that'd be perfect for this, but you will need to upgrade them as they get a little bit larger. So moving on to some of the amphibians you can keep inside this enclosure. Uh, another one of my personal favorites, I've said it a lot in this video, is the Madagascar burrowing frog. It's something that I only found a few months ago. Uh, it's a small burrowing frog from Madagascar. They tend to be green and brown color. They have great camouflage and they stay a small size. So you get a pair inside this enclosure and make like a little bioactive enclosure, which would be great. Also a very popular frog is the Pac-Man frog. Uh, you can keep your babies inside this enclosure, but as they get bigger, especially if you have a larger specimen of the species, you might want to upgrade it into a larger tank, which we will talk about in later episodes. Other amphibians include your thumbnail dart frogs. Um, obviously this doesn't include the Tinctorus and stuff like that. They are too large for this enclosure, but your thumbnail dart frogs, such as your blue jean dart frogs, some of your Ufaga species, they're obviously named after your thumbnail because they're so small. You could keep a couple of these in a small bioactive enclosure such as this one. So they are just a few of the reptiles and amphibians you can keep in a tank this size. But the main use for this tank is going to be for your invertebrates. So let's go through some of the different ones you can keep inside this enclosure. So scorpions are a great fit for this tank. You can keep the Asian forest scorpions as long as you don't have an excessively large one or excessively small ones. Once they grow up a little bit, you can keep them inside this tank perfectly. Also the Arizona Desert Hairies or a Tanzanian Red Claw, you could get these species in this enclosure quite happily and they'll live their whole life inside this enclosure. Scorpions are great for this tank as long as you don't have very small species or baby scorpions as they might escape or you might not find them. Uh, any of the normal sized scorpions such as Asian Forest Scorpions, your Desert Hairy Scorpions, Tanzanian Red Claw are perfect for this tank. Anything that gets a little bit too large, Emperor scorpions and some of the really large heterometrous species of Asian forest scorpion 
might need an upgrade as they get bigger, but then you can upgrade it to a larger tank that we will cover. And if you're into your tarantulas and spiders, keep it to your terrestrial species as there's not a lot of vertical height, so arboreal tarantulas might need a little bit more space. If you have tarantulas such as the Mexican red knee, the white knee tarantula, or the desert blonde tarantula, these would go great inside here. So these are burrowing tarantulas and they'll create a small burrow. They'll live in that burrow and they'll come out to eat. You don't need a large enclosure, so this one would be perfect. But if you're into some of the more weird species, a camel spider would be a good fit for you. These are a desert species that are pretty crazy. You can't tell if it's a tarantula or a scorpion. They're really cool, but they are a little bit creepy. Another cool species is a vinegaroon. It's a really unique species that you can talk about and people will be interested in. You could keep these inside this enclosure and they'd be nice in a sort of semi-bioactive enclosure. If you don't want to be too crazy and keep to the basics, Madagascar hissing cockroaches would be a great fit for you. Or millipedes, as long as you don't have the giant African millipedes, they'll need a bigger enclosure. But your bumblebee millipedes, your fireleg millipedes, rainbow millipedes, they're all great species for this tank and they're low maintenance as well, so they'd be good for kids. If you like bugs, but you're into something a little bit more different, assassin bugs would be very cool. You could keep a small colony in here. There's a few different species that you could keep in here, but they'd be a great fit. Other sort of beetles you could keep in here would be your stag beetles, flower beetles, and sun beetles. They'd be great as they're low maintenance. Also another good option for kids. The last two on my list vary on the size of the species that you get, but mantises and stick insects are great for this enclosure. As long as they're less than 10 centimetres, as this is a 30 centimetre high tank, the tank for your mantis or stick insect has to be two to three times the height of your stick insect or mantis. This will mean it have a good molt. If you do keep a larger mantis in here, it might end up having a dodgy molt and you don't want that as you could put your mantis or stick insect at risk. So these are just a few of the different reptiles, amphibians and invertebrates that you could keep in the Exoterra mini wide terrarium. I hope this helps if you do have an empty tank this size or if you have a specific space that you need a smaller tank for. So if you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like and comment down below if you do have an enclosure this size and tell us what you keep inside that enclosure. Don't forget to subscribe and check out our Instagram for daily updates on all of our different collection and you'll see all the different animals that we keep. So let us know if you're finding this new series helpful. Don't forget to check out this series as well as our podcast and feature series and we'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.